This is the 12th session on the land flowing with milk and honey. Today, we will wrap up the story of the conquest of Canaan. Israel had conquered Canaan with Joshua, and all the tribes had been allotted their inheritance. What they had to do was to completely drive out the Canaanites and make the land their inheritance. But this time, Joshua wasn't supposed to fight ahead of them, and their victory wasn't to be achieved by Joshua's faith alone. Each tribe had to take the allotted land by their own faith. They still had battles to fight. In general, just because a nation loses war doesn't mean all of its citizens are destroyed instantly. Of course, when a nation is defeated, many of its citizens are killed or taken captive. It becomes subject to the victorious nation in a military or political sense, but still, there remain resisting forces here and there. The same way, Joshua subdued all the Canaanite kings and destroyed many cities. But that doesn't mean the entire land of Canaan was empty with all of the Canaanites having killed or driven out. Quite a few of them were still alive and some of them heavily armed themselves to confront Israel. Moreover, God already proclaimed that He would drive out all the inhabitants of Canaan, but He wouldn't rush. The Bible says, I will not drive them out before you in a single year, that the land may be become desolate and the beasts of the field become too numerous for you. I will drive them out before you little by little until you become fruitful and take possessions of the land. Until the Israelites multiplied and filled up the land, it must have been not easy to keep the land even if the Canaanites had been driven out entirely. Just because someone gets, takes the land, it doesn't mean he has to cultivate the land, he has to actually settle in. Only then can he protect the land. He also needs soldiers here and there. To make this happen, just taking the land by war is not enough. His people should fill up the land to obtain the just because he takes that land by a battle, but if that land remains empty, Gentiles could could attack them, and the land could become desolate, and wild beasts, wild animals could thrive on the land. For this reason, God told them that He would gradually drive out the Canaanites to the extent Israel became great and strong enough to take over Canaan. It also means that so no matter how long it would take, each tribe had to fight and drive out the Canaanites from the land they received as an inheritance. They shouldn't say like some of them may think it would be better if God just sent down heavy stones on them and killed them entirely. They think that way, uh, seeking their own benefit, but God isn't so. God allowed them to win victory by His power, so they had to rely on God. But still, the Israelites had to fulfill their own They shouldn't blame God. If they do so, they cannot bring down God's power. There are roles, there are parts that we are responsible for. The reason is, God instructed each tribe to take the land because He'd already given it to them. And He promised to drive out all the Canaanites, however strong they were. 
But depending on how Israel trusted in God's promise and how faithfully they carried out His command, they would face a different outcome. You may think, why didn't God destroy them entirely? But the, the Israelites should remember what God did for them. They had to keep them in mind. So they should think, if only we obey, if we only we march on. The only thing they had to do was obey and march on without getting tired. Continuing from the last session, today we will look over the process of each tribe taking their inheritance and their outcome. Also, we will wrap up, to, wrap up the story of the conquest of Canaan. Hopefully, beloved mommy members will completely make bread of all the words, make faith and life of them, and conquer the land of Canaan like Joshua and Caleb. I pray in our Lord's name that you will surely reap the fruit of God's promise. Each tribe who was allotted their land began to take their inheritance according to their own faith and competence. Based on what they learned from Joshua, they asked God how they should fight. They made various strategies and positively advanced in. Meanwhile, many years went by. While all the tribes hadn't taken their inheritance, Joshua knew that it was time for him to leave the world. Joshua felt the need to remind the Israelites of God's promise once again and urged them to march on with faith. As we learned from the deeds of the sons of Joseph in the last session, the spiritual level of the entire Israel wasn't still reassuring. As they fought under Joshua's command, they obeyed and positively displayed faith, but as they were told to fight with their own faith, they got scared with negative thoughts. While Joshua was still alive, he could still teach them so they would have faith. If they committed sins, Joshua could reproach them so they would turn back. But he wasn't sure that even after his death, they would continue to faithfully serve God only, obey and take the land of Canaan. That's why Joshua felt the need to leave them with the words of exhortation just as Moses did before he went to be with God. First, Joshua called together all the elders, heads, and judges and officers of Israel and left the last will. Be very firm, then, to keep and do all that is written in the book of the law of Moses, so that you may not turn aside from it to the right hand or to the left, so that you will not associate with these nations, these which remain among you, or mention the name of their gods, or make anyone swear by them, or serve them, or bow down to them. But you are to cling to the Lord your God as you have done to this day. To sum up, Joshua advised them to stay close to God and love Him without changing. So far, God had been with Joshua, giving Israel marvelous victories. God promised that if Israel continued to love and stay close to Him and diligently kept His commands, He would give the nation the entire land of Canaan. It's just as He said, one of your men puts to fight a thousand, for the Lord your God is He who fights for you. just as He promised you. If Israel pressed on with faith, God would enable them to defeat their enemies, however strong they were. But if they backslid in faith, forgot God's promise, became close to the Gentiles, and served their idols, God couldn't help but abandon them and leave them entirely destroyed in the middle of Canaan. Thus, Israel had to make sure to keep this in mind and love and keep close to God alone. As Joshua, after Joshua delivered such remarks to the leaders, he called together all the people before God 
and they had a time of solemn resolution. First, Joshua reminded them that God is the faithful God who fulfilled His promise to Abraham so far and that He is the God of power who helped them defeat the strong nation of Egypt and the seven Canaanite tribes. Then, He told them to decide whether they would indeed serve God or the idols. He said, If it is disagreeable in your sight to serve the Lord, choose for yourselves today whom you will serve, whether the gods which your fathers served which were beyond the river, or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you are living. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. There is no question that they must not serve other gods while serving the Lord God, so they had to abandon all the idols. Also, they had to keep God's commands faithfully. Joshua urged them to decide whether or not they would indeed believe in God, only abandon all the idols and faithfully keep God's commands. The Israelites who were with Joshua, were they serving idols? No. While Joshua was alive, they were serving God. But, as I mentioned earlier, after Joshua felt that he would leave the world soon, and Joshua wasn't sure what would happen after he died, even though they were serving God, but Joshua knew that they were not serving God from their heart. So Joshua intended to make promise with them, and Joshua told them to decide for themselves. They, Joshua reminded them of who God was and urged them to make a resolution again. As I prepared this message, I was reminded of what s e n i o r Pastor did. As we repeatedly see the pastor's messages, we always find the words about sanctification. He always uh, points out the sins. He always uses, uses the word. I mean, he always talks about the truth, sanctification, and God's commands, and about how we should keep His commandments. It's all in his sermon. Not just in his sermons, but whatever no matter what kind of gathering or meeting you had with the shepherd you he always emphasized that even when he met his family members he always shared the word of God he always talked about the faithfulness towards God and and the hope for heaven he never said like "Uh, because I'm running this church I'm so burdened he always taught the truth I was reminded of Him. We have to, even when our situation or circumstances change, we have to, that's why Sina Pastor repeatedly taught us so. It felt like I was hearing His voice, the shepherd's voice. And Joshua also urged them to make a resolution. What does this mean? He let them solidify their resolve. He said that if it seems that serving God doesn't benefit you, just choose idols. You have to choose right now. And then Joshua and then Joshua affirmed that he would serve no other God than the Lord God Himself, saying, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Hearing this, the Israelites also didn't hesitate. They immediately confessed their faith in God, saying, We also will serve the Lord, for He is our God. Joshua repeatedly confirmed their commitment. Then, Joshua once again taught them the commands they had to keep to serve God and sent them back. After that, at age 110, he silently ended his life characterized by enthusiasm and faith. What an awesome life he had led. 
when he was a young man, he followed Moses to the end. He was always with Moses. He fought ahead of others in battles. He got along with Moses. While Moses was praying on the mountain, Joshua was in the battlefield relying on Moses' prayer and Joshua won victory. Even while Moses was not around, Joshua held on to the word of God given to them. He remembered them, kept them, and taught the people with the words. And Joshua led the Israelites to victory. So during the seven-year conquest battle, they drove out the Canaanites. This happened by Joshua's march of faith. We know that. And as he ended his life, he showed his love towards people and urged the Israelites to love God only. And his love for God and for the souls. And he ended his life like that. And what kind of life he must be living in heaven. We also should remember what Joshua did and demonstrate the same kind of faithfulness and love towards God. So when we end our life on earth, we will be able to meet God with such mindset. Brothers and sisters, we, Ma Min, have also experienced God's numerous works. For us, God has resolved the issues that can't be handled by man, science, civilization, or religion, and He's given us eternal life, heaven, and joy. God you have met in this church, what kind of God He has been? He is alive. He can resolve all our issues. Even the diseases which cannot be handled by medicine, He healed them. But He taught about such. Thus, we should be able to confess before all people, as for me and my house, we will serve God only. And our confession should be truthful. Another thing I have to ask you is that, I mean, you believe God faithfully. And in addition, in this church, We teach a testify to God. Sir Pastor always taught about God only. He demonstrated that He is living. And in addition, He demonstrated the signs and wonders. So your confessions should be true. And I told you that To serve God is to keep His commands without serving idols. No question, we are not serving idols. But as we hear the messages on the Ten Commandments, if we love something more than God, it could be our idol. And who else taught us this? You have to think about this. And s e n i o r Pastor taught us this real truth. And this church has shown the living God. So, why should, while you've experienced and heard at this church, based on this, you have to keep your firm trust and faith. And that's the kind of mindset we should have right now. I told you that to serve God is to keep His commands without serving idols. It is to keep and live by the words of the 66 books of the Bible and not to commit sins. Today, while numerous people claim to believe in God, they still dwell in darkness by committing sins. Some people put one foot on God and the other on the world and think of this as wise. But God clearly tells us to choose between the two. God tells us either to be hot or cold. He didn't tell us to be lukewarm. He didn't tell us to be somewhere in between, but we have to make a firm 
And, and that's what Father God requires of us. The Bible says, the one who says, I have come to know Him and does not keep His commandments, namely, those who claim to know or believe in God but don't keep His commandments, is a liar, and the truth is not in Him. Namely, while we don't act according to the Word, if we say, I know God, I believe in Him, I love Him, that's a lie. If you indeed decided to choose God, you should reflect on your heart and these always, casting off sins and evil, only then can you be acknowledged as God's true child. Therefore, we should examine ourselves once again as to whether we are making ourselves holy as people who belong to God and have chosen Him. I ask you to believe I ask you to briefly check whether you indeed chose God and have served Him only. Let me give you several questions. Please answer those questions. You have to check whether you've prioritized worldly things, money, and your benefits and feelings over the words of truth. If you have, you didn't choose God and, and you haven't served Him only. Also, check whether you haven't ceased to pray fervently. We pray to God. When we have fellowship with God, we we shouldn't hate communicating with Him. Then, it's a lie if we say we love Him. That's why we have to check whether we pray fervently. And, We have to check whether you still earnestly long for sanctification. If you chose God, you would try to achieve His holiness and joyfully keep His commands. Even if you have shortcomings, if you always try to reflect on and change yourselves, you can say you chose God. Even if you have shortcomings, I mean, let's say you discover just a little bit of envy, hatred, self-seeking heart, or craftiness, and you feel so embarrassed that you bitterly repent and try to cast off such evil. If you do so, you are also serving God. But while you know the word you've heard, if you still commit sins and evil, you are not serving God. Also, I ask you to check whether you cherish your God-given duties and stay passionate about perfectly carrying them out. Particularly, do you cherish the souls entrusted to you as your own life and pray and fast with tears so you won't won't lose even one of them? Having chosen God, all of us should confidently say yes to these questions. Brothers and sisters, even even after the old general Joshua left his last will, and passed away, the conquest of Canaan had to go on. But regrettably, not long after Joshua left them, the Israelites started revealing their spiritual loopholes here and there. They failed to obey God's command of driving out the Canaanites completely. As we learned in the last session, the sons of Joseph failed to demonstrate faith and made confessions out of fear. they ended up not driving them out completely. The Bible says, the book of Judges, uh, this book is about the incidents which happened after Joshua's death. And the book of Judge, God says, now the Lord was with Judah, and they took possession of the hill country, but they could not drive out the inhabitants of the valley because they had iron chariots. They confessed out of fear that people whom they were to conquer had chariots of iron, and things just happened according to their confessions. As we learned in the last session, they demanded a better land, I mean, the sons of Joseph, but Joshua replied, you have to advance and take the land. Why? If you take the land, God will will be with you. But they confessed out of fear that they were afraid because they had chariots of iron. And according to their confession, they failed to take the land. But with faith, how would have they acted? 
We can answer this by remembering how David acted. While King Saul, his generals, and all his soldiers trembled in fear, David confessed in faith, saying like, Because the Lord God is with me, it is no big deal. And it really turned out to be no big deal. Suppose the sons of Joseph confess with faith, If our God is with us, it doesn't matter whatever the enemy has, not to mention the chariots of iron. then the outcome must have been different. But because they were frightened, they failed to drive them out. Also, the tribes of Zebulun, Asher, Naphtali, and Dan failed to drive out the Canaanites completely. They were cases where they were overcome by the Canaanites because their resistance was so strong. One of the tribes was even driven out by the Canaanites. There were also a case where the Israelites were strong enough to win, but they lacked passion to obey God 100% and fulfill His word for sure. God clearly told them to drive them, the Gentiles out and destroy them completely. They should have kept them and made it a goal. They should have remembered the word. They shouldn't have so. They should have sought a comfortable life. They should have made it a goal and acted by faith. Even, but even though they were strong enough, they didn't obey. So God couldn't guarantee them. Actually, driving away, driving away all the Canaanites in the conquered areas required much effort. Having secured land to cultivate and house to live in, they were not that desperate to drive out all the remaining Canaanites. Because they they thought it would be okay to uh, live with them. They sought such a comfortable life. They didn't figure out God's will. They just sought a comfortable life. That's why they couldn't show perfect obedience. They should have figured out why God told them so, why God gave them a word of warning. And just as God was concerned, things turned out so because they just sought a comfortable life and sought their benefits. That's why they found God's word difficult or burdensome. So they were quick to disobey. What about your life? Do you think like, because my faith is not enough, I'm not a pastor. If you think that way, you wouldn't be able to obey God. As a result, you may find yourself in trials and tribulations, and you cannot find out the reason why everything happened. and you have to check how much you remember the word of God you may think you've worked hard for the church but why can't I receive answers and blessings you have to examine yourself based on the word as you look back on yourself the Israelites thought it wouldn't hurt to leave just a few of them alive they just sought a comfortable life living with the Gentiles because they had they already taken land they thought it would be okay to live with them that's why they didn't fully obey God's word later for their disobedience Israel was repaid with troubles and afflictions. No matter how strong their enemy was, no matter how strong their enemy was, if Israel had demonstrated faith, God must have worked for them. Even though they'd experienced God's works of stopping the flow of Jordan, the sun and the moon, They were scared of the Canaanites. This indicates their lack of faith, which is so heartbreaking. Moreover, it was unacceptable that they compromise 
became lazy and intentionally disobeyed God's command. God never wanted His people to mix with the Gentile tribes. As they mingled with the Gentiles, worshiping idols, they would be exposed to their culture. As they married each other, they would become intimate. As a result, Israel would be deceived into idolatry and turn away from God. Concerned about this, God told them to destroy them entirely. Indeed, after Joshua and the people who experienced the conquest of Canaan died, Israel forgot the faithful God Consequently, things unfolded exactly according to God's concern. Israel built intimate relations with the neighboring Gentile tribes, married them, and accepted and served their idols. Thus, God turned His face away from the sinful Israel, and thereafter, Israel continuously lived in afflictions, suffering trials and tribulations. Knowing this in advance, God told them to drive them out, even though it takes quite an effort. God looked things ahead of them, but as the Israelites sought a comfortable life, they failed to obey God. So, their offspring suffered troubles. Among the Israelites that didn't obey completely, the sons of Dan faced the most tragic outcome. The Bible says, Then the Amorites faced the sons of Dan into the hill country, for they did not allow them to come down to the valley. Yet the Amorites persisted in living in Mount Harris, in Ezalon, and in Sherebim. The Gentiles drove the sons of Dan out. So the sons of Dan lived on the hill. The sons of Dan were forced out of their inheritance, let alone driving out the Amorites from the land. They failed to take the God-given land by faith. Instead, they found some land easy to conquer and took it as an inheritance. As you look at the history of Israel, this land, which they arbitrarily took, turned into a place of great inequities. As soon as they entered this land, the sons of Dan began serving an idol. The Bible says, So they set up for themselves Micah's given image, graven image, which he had made all the time that the house of God was at Silwa. A person named Micah was serving an idol made of silver, and the tribe also accepted and served that idol. Hundreds of years later, as King Jeroboam put a golden calf on their land, the land served as the capital of idolatry for Israel. As a result, as a result of their idol worship, Israel ended up being destroyed by the Gentiles, And, as you find in Revelation chapter 7, Dan was not included among the 12 tribes that were sealed, which was a tremendous curse. They failed to take their God-given inheritance by faith and forsook His promise. Their weak faith led to their rebellion of idol worship. Eventually, they were deprived of the qualifications as God's people. As you disobey As you disobey continues, it would finally lead you to fall away from God. With Joshua, all the tribes obeyed with faith and conquered Canaan, but as they were required to act by their own faith, each bore different fruit depending on how true their faith was. The tribes with faith positively advanced and expanded their land, but the ones without faith failed to take their inheritance or drive out the Gentiles, thereby facing troubles. Particularly, the sons of Dan, as they didn't display faith in the first place, they even lost their inheritance. Seeing how, the, seeing how each tribe ended up, we have to keep in mind that 
we shouldn't backslide in faith but stay on alert all the time. Moreover, Joshua, in a situation where Joshua was not fighting ahead of them, but each tribe had to take the land by their own faith, their situation is like ours. Senior pastor is not with us. And we have to do according to our faith. Based on what we've learned and experienced through the shepherd, based on his teachings, we have to check how much we remember the teachings and act act accordingly as we look back on ourselves. Also, we have to remember how each tribe acted, comparing them to ourselves. Each tribe and and one of the tribes faced a tremendous curse, and we have to see how much we obey the shepherd. When we We have no reason to forget those moments of grace that we had with our shepherd. We have no reason to become lazy. When senior pastor is not around, isn't God with us? No. If our answer is delayed, isn't God with us? No. God is the same yesterday, today. And senior pastor has taught us to believe in this God. And Joshua, as he taught his people, can you feel his lamenting heart? Sina Pastor must be having the same kind of lamenting heart. He wants us to run with with faith. Sometimes he says, he wonders who left the church, but he doesn't tell us to Uh, tell him who left the church because he would be heartbroken. He is heartbroken for those people. But he is also happy when he hears of someone running with faith. And he also told me, I will be so happy if I hear good news of the church's revival. And s e n i o r Pastor is still praying for us. And he, with this kind of heart, and the kind of heart when we had with our shepherd, Because He led us well, we, because we so much benefited from Him, we had much grace. So we have to remember that grace and keep going. That's our Christian life. That's how we pay back the grace. Just because Sina Pastor is not with us, can we live just the way as we please? Just because we are not filled with the Spirit, we can just live as we please? We have to run all the more passionately, thereby demonstrating that we have been taught well by the shepherd. We have to testify this to before the enemy devil. You know, the, each tribe had to act by their own faith. They were required to do so. Their situation is like ours, based on what we've seen and experienced, based on If we truly believe all these evidences, while we are in this situation where we have to show our faith, we have to keep running passionately. But what about you? We shouldn't make excuses or you shouldn't blame our... put the blame on other things. We have to realize that we don't have a steadfast heart. We have a change of heart. We have to, then we have to change ourselves. We have to put into practice what we've heard. That way we can have true faith. That's what Father God wants from us. You know, the Israelites were leaving Egypt and they were with Moses because they couldn't show faith. They suffered a 40 year trial. The first generation didn't accept the God's word as faith, but the second generation, they were not like their parents. They made a lesson out of their parents. They obeyed Joshua and conquered the land of Canaan, but even during the conquest battles, they won victory by Joshua's faith. And after that, each of them had to bear fruit according to their respective 
deeds of faith, but how they acted was regrettable. It's like, but we shouldn't be like them. We have to wonderfully march toward New Jerusalem. We have to write a new history. That's our task. Because God, Father God wrap up the human cultivation with great victory. So you, we shouldn't stay where we are. We should be like Caleb. We should be like Joshua. You know, people request all of you should become like Joshua and Caleb. Only then can we be that way we can avoid the outcome that the Israelites faced. Just because I lead a church with faith, that's not enough. Father God examines each and every one of you. And that's what sometimes our weak faith is revealed. Are you discouraged? But this happens by God's love because we have opportunity to fix ourselves. Without such a situation, we wouldn't be able to discover ourselves. We realize that our fullness of spirit, our we realize how lacking we have been and we again make a resolution and then Father God strengthens us and that becomes and Father God takes a look at each and every one of you when the pastor was with us you were faithful you were obedient But God doesn't just acknowledge that as true faith. Father God knew that you had a change of heart inside of you. But in order to lead us to New Jerusalem, God has allowed this situation so that we can look at ourselves and bear perfect fruit. This is truly by God's love. As for me, you know, when senior pastor was around, I was very comfortable living a Christian life. As I carry out my duties, I was very comfortable. And pastors, actually, when you you go out and establish a church, you have to face many heartbreaking situations. But with our shepherd, our Christian life has been comfortable. And relying on the shepherd's power and relying on his power you can have the church members healed or receive resolution of problems. But what about... But pastors should find out the... As as my... As for me, I feel that... And this is a great blessing for me. I should become more qualified as a pastor I should pray more for the church members and bring down more of God's power. It takes more of my efforts. Senior pastor was not... When senior pastor was with us, it was different. I take such responsibility and keep going, so I have to pray more and make more efforts. But what about pastors? I mean, you pastors should also take care of your flock entrusted under your care and pray and fast for them with tears and then Father God will exalt you and give you power and make you into a great servant it's not that Father God favors someone and gives them power each one of you while you go through this trial you shouldn't just complain about senior pastors not being here but we have to make an opportunity of this you have to hold on to this opportunity and bear fruit remember the grace you received when we were with the senior pastor and solidify your I mean But even this effort is not ours. We can do this based on what what we remember 
without what we remember, it's not easy for us to do so. As we hold on to and remember what we've seen and heard, we can, you know, hang on to God and Father God works for us and we can grow into greater faith. This is a blessing and each one of you should realize your shortcomings and grow yourself into greater faith. Whether you do so or not, it's up to you. Father God wants us to demonstrate unchanging faith. The Bible says, Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. God is pleased with truthfulness. He loves an unchanging clean heart. If we stay steadfast in our faith in God and obey what God has commanded without a change of heart, He would also trust and rejoice over us, answering all our prayers and petitions. When we were with the senior pastor, we run passionately in faith. If we do the same right now, Father God will answer and bless us the same way. Father God will God who was with Moses and Joshua faithfully kept His promises that He gave Abraham and finally gave Israel the land of Canaan. Even thereafter, God unchangingly kept His promises to Israel. Namely, when the Israelites loved and feared God and kept His commands, He made them stand out among the older nations. Particularly, during the reigns of David and Jehoshaphat, when the king and the people forsook the idols and feared God, Israel won battles no matter how difficult they were and became a mighty and rich nation, revealing the glory of God. On the contrary, when they abandoned God, worshipped the idols, and committed evil, God also turned His face away, and as a result, they faced big troubles with wars and famine. In the history of Israel, we confirm that things went exactly according to this principle. When they loved and stayed close to God, God was with them and made all things prosper. But when they kept away from God, violating His commands, they soon faced trials, tribulations, etc. This applies to God's children in the world as well. All God's children in the world. It applies to us facing this situation right now. God said, For those who honor me, I will honor, and those who despise me will be lightly esteemed. As said, people who love God and are loved by Him, but as, but as for those who forsook God, forsake God, He cannot but forsake Him. You may say, I've never forsaken God. But what is to forsake God? If we live from the words of God, it is to it is same as forsaking God. If we keep His commandments and love Him, it is to stay close to Him and honor Him. It is no use to say, I love God, I believe in Him. You have to check whether you stay close to Him and keep His commands. then you can find out the reason why you are without His answers and blessings. And as you discover yourself, you can change yourself and you can also bring down His answers and blessings. What a great blessing if God says, I love you, I trust you, and what a great honor this is. But there's a secret to our receiving God's honor. God tells us that when we honor Him, He will honor us. Namely, if we believe God 100%, He believes us 100%. If we trust God 100%, He also trusts us 100%. Thus, I mean, If we trust God 30%, He will do the same. According to what we've done and sown, God trusts and believes us and blesses us. Thus, we should steadfastly press on until we build a perfect trust relationship with God. After making a certain amount of effort, we shouldn't think, until when do I have to live like this? I've done enough. 
Until when should I guard myself against the world? Until when? Until when? Until you enter heaven. Until our Lord comes back. When you reach a certain point when, where you don't find God's word burdensome, you don't even say that. You may feel like you become foolish by sacrificing yourself. You may feel burdensome to keep God's word. Still, we have to do. As we remove hatred, as we serve others whom we hate, as we pray for them, love replaces hatred. Then, it wouldn't be difficult for us to love those people. We have to make such efforts. As we live by the truth that way, as we it wouldn't we wouldn't have to force ourselves to live by the word. We would find ourselves joyful to live so. But until you reach that level, it would be burdensome. But after that, Also, because you receive Father God's love, you live in good health. So what would be the problem? You become the head? You have no financial trouble? You only receive God's love. Father God wants us to give what is the best. That's why Father God gave us the words of truth. So you... People say, until when should we live in the truth? that's why at some point you take in the worldly things and make friends of the world and leave the church if you force yourselves to live at a word I mean you and then you have to pray more and stay on the alert and make a discernment. If I don't live by the truth, I would... You have to... Then you will be only filled with joy. You no longer feel that the way you walk is a narrow way. But until you reach that point, you have to make some efforts. Others say that it would be enough, and then they fall down and backslide in faith. God has been cultivating humans to obtain His children who love Him with an unchanging heart and completely obey regardless of any temptation or persecution. As He did hundreds or thousands of years ago, even now, God earnestly waits for such children so that He would give them the blessing of the land flowing with milk and honey, both on this earth and in heaven. I hope that you will make a lesson out of the Israelites, always stay on alert, and achieve unchanging, perfect faith, thereby coming forth as the best quality fruit that Father God desires. Let me conclude a message. God who gave Abraham the promises of blessing faithfully fulfilled them. He also gave us many promises. He promised that we would evangelize the world with the gospel of holiness and build a grand sanctuary to glorify Him and that many people would change into spirit and whole spirit and enter New Jerusalem. To fulfill the promises He made, God has steadfastly guided His church and senior pastor has marched on vigorously, holding on to all his promises. We've also marched on with obedience, and God has manifested his great and amazing power, constantly confirming that he is with the shepherd and my men. He has helped us march vigorously until his promises on the grand sanctuary and the world of evangelations are fulfilled. Our current circumstance is also part of the process of God's promises being fulfilled. Initially, the Israelites relied on Moses and Joshua's faith, but later they had to take their inheritance for themselves with faith. 
based on their experiences. Likewise, God wants each one of us to grow our faith and bring forth fruits. He's allowed us, he's allowed us this situation to satisfy the justice and to qualify ourselves to build a grand sanctuary and fill up New Jerusalem. Therefore, we shouldn't be discouraged, give up, and just stand by. But relying on the God of Mamin we've experienced, we should press on all the more vigorously. Also, we should quickly finish adorning ourselves as His bride by praying fervently and arming ourselves with the Word. As we are changed so, God will have all the missions fulfilled through us. As you fulfill all the missions, I pray in our Lord. I pray that God will always be with you with the blessing of the land flowing with milk and honey and finally allow you into the New Jerusalem. Hallelujah! Almighty Father God of love, please lay your hands on all brothers and sisters receiving this prayer here in attendance. Lay your hands on all the members of the brain churches and local centuries, and all the GCN TV viewers, and those who are watching via satellites, cables, and internet all over the world, transcending space and time. Plant faith in their hearts and drive out their negative thoughts and doubts. Let all the trials and afflictions leave them. By the fire of the Holy Spirit, from head to toe, scorch their sick and affected parts, including all cells, tissues and nerves, all internal organs and intestines. Let the light of creation come upon them. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I command the enemy devil and Satan, all diseases, germs and viruses, and infirmities, go away. Let the light shine on them. Scorch their incurable and long-term diseases by the fire of the Holy Spirit. Burn all kinds of endemic and contagious diseases like malaria. Be cleansed and made well. All epidemic diseases such as colds and fever go away from them. Protect them from any kinds of germs and viruses and bacteria. Heal them of all kinds of cancers like stomach cancer, lung cancer, liver cancer, breast cancer, womb cancer, intestinal cancer, and all other diseases like AIDS, leukemia, cerebral apoplexy, high blood pressure, low blood pressure, heart disease, lung disease, diabetes, women's diseases, thyroid diseases, and all inflammations. Let them be made whole from polio, stroke, arthritis, herniated discs, and many others. Let all kinds of pains disappear from them, like back pain, headache, and neuralgia. Set them free from epilepsy, autism, depression, neurosis, and all other mental diseases. Loosen them from all kinds of paralysis, and let them get up, walk, and jump. Let them regain good eyesight and restore good hearing. Let the blind open their eyes and the deaf come to hear and mute begin to speak. Heal them of after effects of all kinds of accidents. Restore their ruptured and broken bones. Restore them from burns and let the heat and burning sensation go away from them. Father, let there be no scars left. Be cleansed from all kinds of drug addictions and poisoning. Father, regenerate dead nerves, tissues and cells and bring the dead back to life. Father, please bless them to conceive a baby. Bless them to conceive a baby. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I command the enemy devil and Satan, the ruler of the air, the evil forces and their servants, go away from them. Go away, you evil spirits, unclean spirits, deceiving spirits, spirits of falsehood, separating spirits and all forces of darkness. Loosen all bonds of wickedness and darkness and go away from them. Let the light shine on them. Father God, give them strength to cry out in their prayer and empower them with the power to cast off sins and become sanctified. Let them be in good health as their soul becomes prosperous and let their family be evangelized. Protect them from all kinds of accidents and disasters and bless them to lead a successful and prosperous life in everything. Please protect your children, their home, their business and their work by the fiery hedge of the Holy Spirit with the heavenly host and angels and with your blazing eyes. Give students wisdom and understanding and fill their hearts with more passion and desire for study. Keep their hearts and minds from worldly things and plant into their hearts more fervent love for God. 
Bless your children and let them give glory to you in everything they do, whether they eat or drink or whatever they do. Let them confess and testify to the living God, I've met God, I've experienced God, and received His answers and blessings. Father God, thank you. Let all glory be to you alone. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen.